born with a silver spoon in his mouth means being born into a rich family, whilst the expression born with a silver spoon in one hand and a lighter in the other means born in Glasgow. <laughs> I'm not saying Sean's drunk all the time because he's sitting right there and he always gets aggressive when he's drunk, which he is all the time. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a good drunk. A good, a good drunk? I think so, yeah. <laughs> I've been drunk with him. He's a good drunk. Yeah. yeah. Well, well, proof of proof were needed. Yeah. <laughs> Rob was at the front of the queue when they were handing out teeth. Unfortunately, it was the queue for horses. <laughs> <laughs> Rob's <laughs> wife gave birth to their first child late last year. Great news for everyone, apart from the tooth fairy, who's facing bankruptcy. <laughs> William the Conqueror tried to learn to speak English at the age of 43, but failed, a bit like Danny Dyer. <laughs> John has just had a baby daughter. Yeah. And I'm already back to my previous weight. <laughs> Congratulations to John's wife. It took 12 long hours of pain, tears and drugs, but eventually John <laughs> managed to get her pregnant. <laughs> Twelve hours? <laughs> Wonderful. Excellent. <laughs> Can you imagine? Twelve, Twelve hours. hours? That's all I'll do in my lifetime. <laughs> a moment was originally defined as one fortieth of an hour or ninety seconds. It can be used in phrases such as, Would you like to have sex with me? It'll only take a moment. <laughs> Nog, as in eggnog, is a 17th century word for alcohol and can be used in sentences such as Sean Locke's blood nog level is dangerously high. <laughs> and if you were born on September the 16th, you were most likely conceived on Christmas Day. My birthday's actually September the 15th, so I guess Christmas came early for my mum. <laughs> John has announced the dates for his 2017 UK tour, so to avoid disappointment, don't book now. <laughs> And John's come this evening dressed as Rupert the Bear. <laughs> I'm currently in training to be the next David O'Doherty. It's going very well. <laughs> the T-shirt under the T-shirt under the card. <laughs> my, in many ways, my winter look is just all of my summer looks worn <laughs> at the same time. These <laughs> <laughs> are all of my clothes. <laughs> um, Johnny, you've come as an assassin this evening, yes? Uh, yeah, I'm the man in black. I'm a video game. I'm out to get you. Okay, all I can see is, is a head in a chair. <laughs> I'm seeing an advert that ends with you smashing through a window and saying, well, I'm here, but the bad news is I've eaten the chocolates. <laughs> I'm not saying Roisin is terrible at countdown, but the longest word she's ever come up with on this show is drone. <laughs> Might not seem that bad, but unfortunately, that was in the numbers round. <laughs> Victoria hosts the highbrow quiz Only Connect. Of course, Sean Locke gets more highbrow every year, but that's only because his hairline's receding. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I just thought I'd show you that bit as well. As I was laughing. Go on. Richard Iwadi combines a geeky personality with a brilliant sense of humour. You know, just like John Richardson doesn't. <laughs> I'm not saying David O'Doherty looks like he sells the big issue, but if he was a card game, he'd be Top Tramps. <laughs> <laughs> if he was running for president in America, he'd be Donald Trump. <laughs> and if your kids were jumping up and down on him in the garden, he'd be a trampoline. <laughs> At least they don't look like a vampire who's temping like you. <laughs> <laughs> Russell used to live with John Richardson at university, and it was living with John that actually inspired Russell to take up stand-up. Anything to get out of that flat. <laughs> it's a special Christmas for John. It's the first time his baby daughter will be visited by Santa. Of course, John knows that one day the time will come when his daughter will sadly realise that John is her father. <laughs> With her impressive qualifications in math, science and physics, Rachel is very much like a modern-day Marie Curie. If Marie Curie had packed it all in to become a sidekick on a quiz show. <laughs> Johnny recently appeared in an episode of Celebrity Storage Hunters. He wasn't meant to, but they opened an old abandoned <laughs> container <laughs> and found him sleeping inside. <laughs> John Richardson is a real man of the people, and those people are the ones that wear cardigans and don't have any friends. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that told me. The horn section are a jazz band. It's not the notes you play in jazz, it's the notes you don't play, and I, for one, wish there were a lot more of those. <laughs> A loner who seems a bit weird and keeps himself to himself is how his neighbours will no doubt describe him when he's eventually caught. 
Carrie had once performed a 50-hour improv marathon. They only stopped it when the inmates at Guantanamo finally <laughs> cracked. <laughs> <laughs> For Sean, it feels like Christmas every day, because he always starts drinking at 11am. <laughs> oh, my God, that's amazing. What have you got? Uh, I've got an espresso martini that oh, would wake mate. the dead. <laughs> Is that my vinegar? No idea. Oh, we'll swap, swap it with what's John. Yours? Can I taste a mojito yeah. or some shit. Yeah. <laughs> well, mine's really good. What's uh, mine? Mm. Cheers, mate. Yours is alcohol, and you love alcohol, Rosie. <laughs> Rich Osman, six foot seven, is on a team with John Richardson, five foot three. That's the long and the short of it. <laughs> Susie is so versatile. Not only is she on TV, she's also a successful author and radio broadcaster. So if you're a fan of watching something boring, reading something <laughs> boring, or hearing something boring, she's got it covered. <laughs> Rachel is like a film star. Unfortunately, that film is Rain Man. <laughs> I, I thought it was going to be a dancing joke. I'll take Rain Man, that's fine. She's also shit at dancing. <laughs> John once performed a gig at a hospital, I presume, because they'd run out of anaesthetic. <laughs> Sam has an unusual look. He looks like the guy at the police press conference that everyone thought did it, but it turns out he did. <laughs> Susie's new book is out just in time for Christmas. Finally, we know what all the children on Santa's naughty list are getting this year. <laughs> Sarah's written a book called The Autobiography of the Female Body. Apparently, there's a whole chapter on the G-spot, but I couldn't find it. <laughs> so now it's time for John and Roisin to go head-to-head -head in the numbers. Ah, uh, I mean, should we, should we bother doing this? Ten points. It's John. <laughs> Russell is from Bristol, so at Christmas there's nothing he likes more than a nice glass of Mull WKD. <laughs> if you didn't see Rachel dance on Strictly, just imagine a giraffe with BSE trying to ice skate on rollerblades during an earthquake <laughs> on a planet made of jelly. You get the idea. <laughs> Susie lives a simple life and doesn't yearn for materialistic things. In fact, most of her salary goes on books, potted plants and treats for her pet dog. The rest she spends on crack, male strippers and replacing <laughs> worn-out equipment in her sex dungeon. <laughs> Kathy doesn't eat meat, not for ethical reasons, she just doesn't like the taste, which means Christmas dinner around Kathy's house will be chit. <laughs> and the big one's 75 and 50. And you can do it. Five. Thank you. 878. I don't think she can. <laughs> and your time starts now. I'm not saying Claudia looks like a panda, but I'd like to take this opportunity to thank Edinburgh Zoo for lending her to us for the evening. <laughs> David Mitchell is such an old-fashioned fuddy-duddy that his daughter's first word was granddad. <laughs> I'm not saying Susie has a voracious appetite for men, but she's the only woman in Britain to have completed Tinder. <laughs> Susie recently released a new book all about the origins of words and phrases. I must admit, Susie, I couldn't put it down, because I didn't pick it up. <laughs> Rachel Riley is a mathematician, TV host and physicist. Is there anything she can't do? Yes, move her feet in time with a piece of music. <laughs> What does the future hold for Rachel Riley? Well, if history's taught us anything, she's about nine years away from going into the jungle. <laughs> Rachel, I'm not saying there's been a mix-up in wardrobe, but whenever I see you do the numbers, I can't help but wonder if there's a girl doing Jaeger bombs in a Weatherspoons dressed as a librarian. <laughs> 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 Susie's written 13 books, presented numerous TV shows and edited the dictionary. Impressive stuff. But just imagine how much more she could have achieved if she hadn't spent quite so much time chasing cock. Danny is an incredible actor. Whether he's playing an East End gangster, a Cockney wide boy, or an Essex hard nut, he can turn his hand to anything. <laughs> <laughs> Danny is on the latest series of Who Do You Think You Are? The show traces his family from poverty and crime in the East End all the way back through the centuries. The poverty and crime in the East End. <laughs> we should just do Danny Dyer jokes. They're a lot of fun. <laughs> Mish once went to see the film Shame with his dad, but said the graphic sex made it very awkward. Everyone in the cinema asked them to stop. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Dad! <laughs> First time on the show, are you going to be better on the numbers or the letters? I think it's going to be uh, letters. I think I'm a, I'm a man of words, cos I spent half my time at university studying English. What would you do the other half? I was captain of the school's kissing team. <laughs> <laughs> Captain of the school's kissing team. Done a lot of practice at home with your dad, I would imagine. <laughs>
If you want to square and cube things, get a job in a fucking jelly factory, mate. Maybe the weakest, maybe the weakest comeback there's ever been. <laughs> is the, no, 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 no. Get a job no. in a jelly factory, no. mate. <laughs> that's the worst thing that's ever been said. <laughs>